So, the, the, uh, going on to Rise of Skywalker, um, if you're ready to move on from... Oh, eight, 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 eight. I'm ready, and there are a bunch of things that I've caught on to the second time around. Okay. So, why don't you start? All right, one. so we'll start with uh, the statues as uh, Kylo Ren is walking through. I'm sure you caught on to a few of those, a uh, few of the faces in there. Mm -hmm. Which, unless I've gone nuts, I'm could I could have sworn I saw some faces from the old Republic. So I could have sworn I saw Revan, saw maybe a few of the other, you know, older I think legends. I think, Revan is canon. I think so too. I think they're suggesting that the old Republic, the entire old Republic, could be canon. Uh huh. Because again, since this is the final one of the Skywalker saga, they they want to try to you know make things not only right but make things connect in new ways. So I think having maybe uh, I'm going to be seeing it again soon with my grandparents, and I think that uh, I'll have to look for that again because I didn't you know mm -hmm. the first time whenever whenever I see a Star Wars movie, I'm so friggin' hyped. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like a Lego movie. You have to rewatch it eight times oh, and see yeah. new things. But uh, go going back to the Broom Boy. Uh, a lot of people had an issue that they're like, oh, because, spoilers, because Rey is a Palpatine, that whole idea of, oh, Rey's a nobody, she can, you know, the whole idea that you can achieve everything from nothing, mm -hmm. people were mad. They're like, oh, I wanted Rey to be a nobody, but I'm glad that she's a Palpatine because it really doesn't apply to Rey anymore. It applies to the broom boy. Mm -hmm. You know, it applies to everyone from Attack of the Clones, Kaede Mundi, Luminara Unduli, Aelis Sakura. Uh -huh. Plo Koon, Kifisto, they weren't Skywalkers, and they weren't Kenobis, uh -huh. and they weren't Palpatines, but they were still special. So I think that whole idea doesn't really apply to Rey anymore, it applies to the Broom Boy and the new generation of people, you know. But... Uh, I was gonna... S where was I? Uh, no. Then, there was another thing that I caught on to. Uh, you remember when mm -hmm. they are going into the scene, you see Snoke growing in uh, what looks like a back yeah, tank? Yeah. So, yeah. I know I saw Snoke. I could have sworn mm -hmm. for a second I saw what looked like Vader. Like but the mask or the whole the whole thing? It almost looked like the whole thing. Huh. But then there was... I only saw Snoke. I'll have to... Again, when I rewatch it, I'll have to, you know, get back to you on that. But uh, that was cool. I think Snoke, everyone in the world, me and you, uh, I remember it went to, like, Red Robin with my mom and dad, and we're like, hey, who's Snoke? You know, even the waiter. Mm -hmm. Like, who's Snoke? Um, and the fact that Snoke now we know is just a puppet of Palpatine, I think that's great. And so was the mask that Ben talks to in The Force Awakens, you know, because uh, I probably told you this earlier, but uh, Anakin dies as a Force ghost. He doesn't die as Vader, he dies yeah. as Anakin. Yeah, it made no so it sense. sense. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, a lot of people are like, a lot of people are like, oh, Palpatine is just in this movie because he has to be. And that's just, no, you know, Palpatine was always in these new movies. He just showed himself now. You know, he was gathering his forces and using Snoke as kind of bait mm -hmm. uh, to train and lure Kylo Ren into this uh, fall. Mm. And it was cool. I was going to say, there was one other person that I saw very far in the background in the back to tank. And I, okay. have, I might have to see it a third time just to make sure I haven't lost my mind. I thought I saw the main character from Force Unleashed. Oh, Galen Merrick? I Star thought Killer? for a second I saw Star Killer sitting in a back to tank. <laughs> Which, if be if I actually did see that, or maybe I'm just losing my mind, I'm I'm kind of hoping. I'm hoping that yeah. that's in there. Because uh, you know, I'm doing a Force Unleashed two walkthrough. It's kind of been hard because family things, and then Christmas, you know. Of course, oh yeah, time with the family. Stuff. Yeah, um, but I'll get to it. Uh, I'm gonna film another one probably t tonight, maybe. But. That's such a bummer that Force Unleashed 1 and 2 are not canon anymore, you know, because those are good games. Mm -hmm. I still and remember... It, it could work with it again. I still remember the argument that they had of, oh, you can't have an overpowered character like that in the Star Wars universe. And yet, at the end of the movie, Palpatine just electrocutes every ship in the sky. Right, yeah. Now, granted, Palpatine has been saving his strength, and the Star Killer is just kind of there. But yeah, I do agree with that. You know, it is it is kind of like that. But to have that be canon, man, that would be freaking something. That oh, would be no. pretty sweet. If that becomes canon, I pray for a remaster and a new game. Yeah, for sure. Force Unleashed three all the way. Force Unleashed three. Hell, give me multiplayer. I'll have a field day. Maybe he could be in Jedi Fallen Order too. Who knows? I 
I keep questioning that. What I have to look at when Fallen Order versus Force Unleashed takes place in the timeline. Because here's the thing. It takes place after they already assaulted Kashyyyk and have taken some of the Wookiees. So right. it makes me wonder if perhaps the events of Force Unleashed, the very beginning, where Vader kills uh, Starkiller's father and takes him, could have already mm -hmm. happened. And that perhaps... Yeah, that would be an awesome yeah. boss fight if you go in as the main character from Fallen Order. Yeah, there's an assassin going after you and you turn around and guess who? Yeah, right. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, <clears throat> with, uh, but I love what they did. That, you know, Galen Merrick. Galen is, uh, or Galen, whatever. He's uh, Jin's father. Mm -hmm. that, that name. And then Starkiller is Starkiller Base. So mm -hmm. I kind of like how they, you know, they took they took the name... And they're like, well, that's not canon, but we'll make we'll make the name canon, you know? Yeah, it's a start. And then you have then you have Palpatine. Now, mm -hmm. me and a buddy were discussing this at the beginning of the movie. We don't think he's actually alive. Okay, so you think like the dark side is keeping him? I my theory is that that's it. That's his body, but his spirit, as in his undead spirit, is possessing his corpse. That he's yeah, quite literally he's clinging on to it. Yeah, because, you know, have you seen the movie Assassin's Creed with Michael Fassbender? Are you referring to the thing that he has on his back? Which I almost yeah. made a reference to portals uh, when I looked at oh. it. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I mean, that makes sense because we really don't get to see how he escapes the Death Star 2. He just kind of does, which I don't have a problem with. But oh, no, but I'm curious. curious. Yeah, if, if you wanted to find an answer that could easily be an answer... Um, that he really is dead, you know, and like with Darth Maul, when, you know, we all thought Darth Maul died in episode one, but he was so mad, he was so, he was quite literally so pissed off that he couldn't physically die, you know, and that could have been the same thing with Palpatine, who knows? True. Uh, okay, I'm trying to keep track of everything in my head. Uh, mm -hmm. I love how they managed to use the Joker voice uh, in the Star Wars movie. Yeah, Mark Hamill, yeah. Yeah. Because I heard that I was like, wait a minute, they just put the Joker in the movie. Just yeah. for a split second. And that's the voice, that's the voice I do for uh, my Joker Halloween video, if you saw that. Oh, I um, love that. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was funny, because in the theater, there was me and my family, and then maybe like four other people, and I literally said, oh, it's Joker! You know, and they were like, shut up. <laughs> I was going to say, my theater was packed. <laughs> like, I hear Joker. Yeah, um, but to wrap up this sequel trilogy, at least these three, I, I honestly think that The Rise of Skywalker was the definitive end to all these movies. You know, it, it tied mm. everything in a neat little bow. It, it kind of got the haters to calm down, and it also got us fans to kind of take a breather and go, okay, well, Ray's not a nobody, but there's a reason for that. And Snoke is a no isn't a nobody, but there's a reason for that. You know, so it, it made everyone happy, I think. Yeah, I was going to say, for the first time in a long time, you actually saw people united a little bit. I mean, granted, there's still some people who say that this is the worst This is the worst one, what are you doing, yeah. Star Wars is dead, I'm only watching The Mandalorian, which if yeah. you're going to watch The Mandalorian, by all means. No, it's a great show. Oh, love it. But, but. yeah, those people, I don't know, like, it's, it's kind of hard to, it's kind of weird for me to just say, oh, you're wrong and I'm right type thing, but... Most of it is true opinion, you know, like like me and you, and then, you know, millions of other fans. Yeah. And then, like I said, Disney's dead. This movie sucks. It's like, when you don't offer valuable reasons, you're just kind of looking like a moron, you know what I mean? And those people are just, they're not bad people, you know, they're probably mm -hmm. great people. But they're just a little confused about the franchise. And when me and you, you know, I, I tried to defend it in my last Jedi video, and thankfully I didn't get flogged with hate, but you do what you can, you know, and I'm done talking about it, but... I think it's it's nice to talk about, you know, like me and you, it's nice to talk about a fan who understands, yeah, you know, what, what we're both seeing here. There's one thought that just ran through my head, and I don't know the answer to this one. So, you know, we know where Anakin's lightsaber, well, Luke's, Anakin's, Ray's lightsaber is. We know we know yeah. Leia has a lightsaber, which kind of want to see more of the training. Yeah. Where's Luke's green lightsaber? Yeah, I don't... See, that's the confusing thing, because I think the last time we see it is during that flashback. Mm-hmm. After that, on, gone. Uh, yeah. And the same thing, um, 
in the last Jedi when when Ray and Kylo use the Force and they blow up the blue lightsaber, how does that get rebuilt? You know, is it do they just snap it together like a stick or? That would kind of be hilarious, but yeah. uh, I don't know. It's questions it's, that it, I guess they'll have to answer. Yeah, it, but it's something I don't think they directly need to answer, but it would be nice if they did, you know? It's yeah. not like I hate the movie because I didn't see the green lightsaber. Mm hmm. But, and me personally, whenever I see Luke, I always think Luke should have a green lightsaber. And I love that he had a blue one in the end of in Battle of Crate. Mm hmm. But whenever I play the Lego Star Wars games or watch Return of the Jedi, I see Luke's green lightsaber and I'm like, that's a damn good saber. You know, that mm. is his. You know, like Anakin's is blue, Luke's is green, Ahsoka's is. White. Uh, gray. Gray, yeah, green ish, you know, it is. But that's really cool. Plus, we have Clone Wars Season 7 coming out next year, too. Oh, man, I can't wait. That, yeah, the Lego game, mm -hmm. I, I'm not going to know what to do with myself with all those games. Yeah, right, yeah, I know, for <laughs> sure. Um, so, we're done with those. Let's move on to Solo for a quick minute. I know I can't be too much longer because it is Christmas Eve. Yeah, it is Christmas Eve. <laughs> yeah, at least the time of this recording. Um, yeah. But Solo, A Star Wars Story, I think the main reason why people didn't like it, I think the box office failed because they're taking a step back, and everyone wanted to see a step forward, you know? Mm -hmm. We don't want to see an origin. Um, and then, of course, you got Alden Ehrenreich or whatever his name is playing uh, Han Solo. A lot of people were like, oh, it's not Harrison Ford. I'm like, of course it can't be. He's like 80, you know what I mean? Yeah. You can't deal with someone that well. And I think he did a great job playing Han Solo. You know, he doesn't... He doesn't go, you know, oh, I'm Han Solo, you know, come on, Chewbacca. It's not like, like a complete ripoff. It's its own thing. Yeah. I was going to say, the other issue was, wait, was it Last Jedi, then Solo, or was it Solo, then Last Jedi? Uh, uh, Force Awakens, Rogue One, Last Jedi, Solo. There's Last. the issue right there. This It was riding right off the hate of uh, The Last Jedi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not wrong there. No. I was going to say... Honestly, honestly, I think it's a good movie. I mean, I have a few issues with it. A few of the... Uh, the editing's a bit weird. Again, you, you all can go see my review on that. Um, I, I don't remember what I gave. Probably like an A or an A-, minus, but I think Disney killed it again, you know? I mean, I don't have that many issues with it. I think it it, it got the... How he got his name, Solo. I think that was cool. Mm -hmm. uh, the origin of Chewbacca being like some... This Wampa... You know, rancor type creature, and then we all like, oh, Julie. You know, it's it's kind of cool how how that happened. And then, of course, at the very end, you get Darth Maul, and not just anyone. Yeah, it's cool. him, the actual physical actor uh, who goes here, there, and everywhere to Comic Con. Uh, uh, he wasn't voiced by Ray Park though. That was actually, no, that's uh, Sam. Uh, what the hell's? How do you pronounce that last name? Whitwer, I think, or something. Yeah. Which his cool. his voice is the better of the bunch for Maul without without yeah. question. And did you know that the guy who voices Darth Maul is the voice of Star Killer in the Force yes. Unleashed? Yes, he's also okay. the voice of the Emperor in Force Unleashed. Oh really? Yep, he does the Emperor. Huh. Do it. Um, <laughs> but Mountain, do it. But the uh, I think that um, I think Kira is a good character too. You know, because she's. She's kind of like Kylo Ren, very conflicted, mm -hmm. and she's she's good, and then she's bad, and then she's good and bad, you know. So by the end of this movie, that's why Han Solo in A New Hope is so grizzled and pissed off all the time because he just got screwed over by his love, you know. Mm -hmm. I was going to say it leaves it open to a sequel, though. That's the only thing. Is it's right, and the negative is that it did so poorly at the box office. They're never going to do a know. sequel. Yeah, and really, realistically, critic reviews don't matter for a movie. It's really how much money it makes. Yeah, I was going to say, um, critic reviews, let's put it this way, Avengers got a bad critic review. The original yeah. Avengers. Yeah. I mean, realistically, that is all opinion, but I, I don't, like, I have a few friends and one family member that kind of, they look at a movie and they go, oh, what's the Rotten Tomato score? And I'm like, uh, let's say the Lego Ninjago movie. Mm-hmm. That's my, that's my favorite Lego movie, personally. Uh, it got, I think, like a 55. Um, and I love it. You know, I really don't have any issues with it. And, yeah. you know, my friend was like, oh, 55? Oh, I'm not seeing that. And it's like, you have to, you know, this Rise of Skywalker, you got, what, is that, like a 52? It, uh, it keeps, need, yeah, it's bad. It keeps going down. You need to trust your own opinion. You know, people are slowly becoming droids and robots. You know, they go, mm -hmm. oh, someone doesn't like that. I don't like that. You know, and like for you, you can watch my review all you want. Yeah. And I might love or hate them. But, you know, I don't want you to go, oh, Franchise Fanatic hates 
you know, Cars 3, uh, which I don't. I won't see it. You know, I don't, you know, you need to form your own opinion on things. And I think that's really important because, especially with Star Wars, because when everyone, when critics hate Episode 9, you know, all these haters are like, oh, we're right. You know, it sucks. And then here we are like, oh, it's, it's great. You know? Mm-hmm. So it goes both ways. Yeah. Which, believe me, people just, they don't understand to, you know, take a deep breath and go, okay, you can be a fan, but you have to understand. You, a true fan will ride through what they like and what they don't like, just like with anything. <clears throat> They're gonna be. Yeah, like you could say, you could say, oh, I love the Browns, and then they lose, and then you go, oh, they suck. I hate them. You know. Yeah. You want to talk about true fans? My dad's a Jets fan. Yeah. <laughs> Last time they won the Super Bowl, he was three. Oh wow! So, <laughs> that man. Yeah. That's a true fan for you. Yeah, no, I'm telling you, but. Um, with the, like I said, I think honestly every Disney movie that they made is is pretty much a hitter. Mm. I don't think there's been one that's maybe maybe Solo is my least favorite, but it's still a good film. You yeah, know? it's not like it's bad. I was gonna say if I had to if I had to rank them in order, I would probably put Solo at the bottom. Mm. Then I would do Last Jedi, Force Awakens, and then it's it's a really really hard decision. But I'm gonna say Rogue One, then Rise of Skywalker. Okay, that's a good list, yeah. Um, my personal least favorite of the entire Skywalker saga has to be episode two. Uh, just because... Well, yeah. Uh, it's a good Star Wars movie, but as a movie, the, the acting's wooden, the CGI is marked out, the writing is pretty atrocious. You know, it has good moments, mm-hmm. but it doesn't have good moments. You know? Oh, the pacing was horrible. <laughs> yeah. 